We're back. We're at the Meg's Point Nature Center. I'm Ranger Russ, and we're going to be talking about your choice for fish today. It was overwhelming. It was a unanimous decision that everybody, not everybody, but 90% of you wanted to hear about the catfish. So I have the catfish in front of me. Before we start talking about the catfish though, I wanna remind everybody of all those things that you should be doing out there. Washing your hands, keeping your social distance, checking on your neighbors, making sure everybody has plenty of whatever it is they need. So if you have extras, make sure you share. Remember, we're all connected. We're connected to the animals and we're connected to each other. So this is a bullhead. This is a brown bullhead. I have a really hard time telling brown bullhead from the black bullhead. They're very similar catfish. The brown bullhead is a little bit more mottled. It has more patches on the back where the black bullhead is, has a more solid color. And also fish have rays. They're sort of like spines within some of the fins. And the bullhead, the brown bullhead has more rays than the black bullhead. So if you're willing to take the risk of getting spiked by those little rays, you can count out those little rays. Now, everybody knows what a fish is and what makes a fish special. And one of the big things that makes fish special is they have scales. Uh, if any of you eat fish or have caught fish, you've seen the scales, you, you scaled a fish yourself maybe. Um, the catfish is one of those exceptions. I always say there's gonna be an exception in nature. And in this case, the catfish does not have scales. It just has a smooth uh, skin covering its body. Still a really cool uh, fish. I'm gonna teach you guys a new word right now, okay? Catfish are benthic. Benthic means bottom feeding, bottom living, bottom dwelling, however you wanna say it. So these guys are gonna be moving along the bottom of the water. That's why that dark color really helps their camouflage. Remember, light doesn't penetrate all the way to the bottom of the deepest ponds. It gets really dark down there. If you're looking down into the water, it, some of our ponds in Connecticut, they look black. And this fish will be able to blend right in. They have excellent camouflage for that. If you look on the underside, I'm not gonna pick it up, but it's gonna be lighter on the belly, okay? So this fish is living on the bottom and it has to eat things that it finds on the bottom. Now, remember yesterday we talked about the, the stink pot turtle. It's an omnivore. The catfish is also an omnivore. So it's gonna eat any organic matter that's at the bottom. So bits of detritus, anything that's sinking down to the bottom that's still organic. Uh, so plants, animals, it will eat live things. Uh, it may eat worms or tadpoles, uh, insect larvae, all the things that you're gonna find in a freshwater pond here in Connecticut. These are found from Nova Scotia all the way down through the Eastern US. So a pretty widespread fish. People do like to fish for them. They are a popular um, fish. They get up to 24 inches, so they get to be a, a pretty large fish. And these fish will lay eggs. Okay, so on the bottom of these ponds and, and rivers and, and big waterways, they're gonna find rocks that they can get their eggs under the rocks or in a hollow log cavities and, and open spaces like that, or covered spaces, that's where they're gonna try and, and lay their eggs. And typically they could have you know, 50 to 10,000 eggs, so they could lay a lot of eggs or just a few eggs. Now, these fish don't live very long. Six to eight years is gonna be the max for them. They're, they mature at about three years old, so they only have you know, a pretty short breeding life where they can uh, reproduce. And generally, as the fish gets older, near the end of its life, it's gonna start laying fewer and fewer eggs. So you're not gonna see that you know, 10,000 number that the younger fish will have. So our fish here, not full size, not even close to full size. It'll get quite a bit bigger. One of the things that really define a catfish are the barbels. I love that word, so everybody try and say barbel. Uh, they're the little things that come off of the little tentacles uh, that are on there. They don't have any rays within their barbels. They're soft, and they will use those on the bottom in the dark. They feel around, and they're trying to find their food um, or maybe a dark place to hide out. So they will hide in a log or a cavity underwater. 
So it's just a really amazing fish. And I'm going to remind everybody again, most fish have spines in their, have rays inside of their fins. So if you picked them up and they thrashed around, a lot of times you could get stabbed by them. So you want to be really careful when you're handling fish. If you're a fisherman and you've caught these fish, when you catch any fish, make sure your hands are wet if you're going to release the fish as you're handling it so that you don't rub all the slime and scales off the fish. That slime really helps protect the fish. They all have a slimy coat on them. All right. Are we ready to do some questions? I have an assistant over here that's going to tell me some of the questions that you guys are asking. A lot of people want to know why is it called catfish? Good question, and it's the barbels. So they've got whiskers. They're not really whiskers, but cats have whiskers, so a fish with whiskers is a catfish. Uh, what do we feed it? What do we feed it? I love that question. Uh, so our fish, all of our animals at the Nature Center, we offer them a variety of food. We don't just feed them one thing. In the wild, they're not just going to eat one thing. So a lot of fish chunks. We have algae wafers. There are uh, shrimp pellets, sometimes actual shrimp. Um, just about any oh, insect larvae. Sometimes we'll put in uh, mealworms or things like that, mealworms. So we give them a variety of food. Ooh, good question. I'm not sure how fast the catfish can swim. I've seen them underwater when I'm snorkeling, and they're quick enough to get away from me instantly, so they're pretty fast. Can you explain what the barbels are used for? I, I did. They're used, they feel around on the bottom, just like a cat uses their, their whiskers. Well, these don't have uh, scales. Fish in general don't really shed their scales. Uh, the scales grow with them as they get larger, and they will sometimes, though, a uh, slimy coat will come off. I see somebody's asking, where can you find them in Connecticut? It's, they're going to be in larger waterways and big ponds, so uh, large rivers, lakes, ponds, they don't really like shallow water. Again, they're a deep dweller. They like it in the dark. So if your body of water isn't deep enough, then they're not going to like that. What other animals eat catfish? I was just good. That's a good one because I was just going to say there are lots of things that like to eat catfish in the water. They might get preyed upon. The smaller catfish obviously are going to get preyed on by more things, but the smaller ones, the largemouth bass, the pike, pickerel. Um, the big ones will eat the, the catfish. Uh, they will occasionally be eaten by otters or mink. The mink love to swim in the waterways and they'll uh, dive down and catch them. And otters will like to catch them as well. If they get into shallow enough water, you might see them preyed on by an osprey because osprey will eat uh, any fish that gets within about three feet of water. So these guys may stray into that. Somebody says, are they part cat and part fish? No, they're no part cat, just fish. Can you show us the catfish better? I was going to wait to do that at the end. Um, I'll try and get him to, to swim up a little bit more so you can see him a little better and I'll bring the camera closer so you can see him. Do we have any other questions repeated here? Uh, can they live in salt water? Good question. Typically catfish are not found in salt water. I'm going to say there are probably exceptions somewhere in the world, but catfish prefer fresh water. All right, what kind of water is in the tank? This is a freshwater tank. And I'm going to get ready to show you uh, the catfish. Can they eat cannibals? Can they? Yeah, actually, that's a good question, too. They will occasionally eat their own eggs or the eggs of other catfish. So occasionally it will happen. Not very often. 
Is this one injured? Yeah, this one has, uh, looks like his barbels have been nipped on by uh, maybe one of the other fish in the tank. Unfortunately, in, in our tanks, we have uh, ecosystems going and fish will prey upon one another uh, in the tanks. So it looks like that's what happened to this guy. All right, let's see if we can get a better view for you of the catfish. Again, this isn't a large one. So they can take pretty cold water. We talked a little bit about the fact that uh, reptiles are ectothermic. The fish are also ecto ectothermic, so their temperature depends on the temperature of the water. They do like warmer water, uh, but they can take colder water too. In the winter, they're gonna go to the bottom of ponds. If the pond freezes over, they'll just go to the bottom and hang out there for the, for the whole winter. And then they'll get active. When, once it warms up enough, they'll start to move up into the water column. How old is this fish? Uh, we're not really sure. It's kind of hard to tell how old a fish is by its size. Size, like with many animals, is dependent on how much food they're getting. So if they're getting lots of food, you're gonna see them get larger faster. And if they don't have as much food, they won't go, grow quite as quickly as some of the other um, fish. Okay. So, uh, we're going to be putting up some things on our website for you to, to follow along and, and we'll add to this program. We're going to be putting up a list of vocabulary. So some of the big words that I've been using, some of the cool words like benthic and omnivore and scute, uh, we're going to be talking about those. And you'll have to go to the website for those. We might have them on the Facebook page as well. I really want more comments, so I'd like to hear more feedback. I want to know what kind of animals you guys want to hear about. I want to hear about the animals from your area, because although the Meggs Point Nature Center is located in Connecticut, I know this is spreading out across the country. Yesterday we had people from Colorado, Wyoming. I saw today there were uh, groups of people, several groups of people from Maine. So I want to give a shout out to all the people in Maine. Um, but let me know about the wildlife that's in your area and how it differs maybe from the wildlife that we have here in Connecticut. And I'll try and relate some of the animals that we have to animals that you have in your area. I know as you go f further down south, they get channel catfish, which are quite a bit larger than our uh, bullhead catfish. And the channels, they'll actually eat the bullheads. Uh, the big channels can eat a bullhead this size. So... All right, I hope all of you enjoyed this. Remember that we'll be doing this tomorrow, two o'clock in our woods room, or sorry, 11 o'clock in our woods room, two o'clock, we'll be back here in the water room. And tune in again, I hope you enjoy these episodes here at the Meg's Point Nature Center. <laughs>